Hmm, Xbox Series X or PS5? I just don't know which one to get. Oh. Hey, Shaniqua. What, you want me to test the Xbox Series X? Uh, yeah, just send it down. Wow, now that was fast. Okay, so I've had a few days to look at this console now. So let's take a closer look at it. And it has been compared to a fridge. Hmm, I can totally see that. But the main thing with this design is it's big and it's boxy. So where's it gonna go? Well, it's not gonna fit as easily in a lot of people's TV stands, but I do like this smooth and sleek design and it's powerful. As for the fan inside, it's super quiet and it doesn't seem to get too hot either. Impressive for the amount of power that's inside it. So according to the specs, this Series X has 12 teraflops of GPU performance. The CPU is a custom Zen 2 CPU, eight calls it. Ugh, Alex, you're boring yourself. Ugh, I know. Okay, so what's it really mean? Well, it's a lot faster, smoother, and sharper than the Xbox One X. It's designed for 4K resolution, which basically means the images look really crisp. Worlds look more detailed and lifelike, and reflections and shadows look pretty amazing. Now that's down to something called ray tracing. The Series X supports up to 120 frames per second, which basically means games will look and feel really smooth to play. And I really noticed this when I was playing Ori and Forza. My favourite feature is its quick resume, which lets you flip between many games without having to save and close and wait for the next one to load, and you can carry on right where you left off. The dashboard looks pretty much the same as the Xbox One. The controller is not that much different either, it just has a few tweaks from the Xbox One. It has a new share button in the middle for showing off your wins. It has an updated D-pad, which is oddly satisfying to press. It has a textured grip at the back, which I love, and a new USB Type-C port at the top. So what about the price? Well, at £450, it's not cheap. So is it worth it? And what do you get for your money? You get the console, controller, but no games with it. But it is backwards compatible, which means if you have any old Xbox games lying around, this will probably be able to play a lot of them. As for new games, there just aren't many exclusive next-gen titles out yet. For a monthly subscription, you can access around 100 games instantly with the Game Pass. And Microsoft has given a lot of old games a refresh for this console, so they will look better and load faster. As quite possibly the most powerful console yet, it does perform really well, but I've just not been blown away by next gen just yet. It definitely is faster and better tech, but I think we'll really see what this console can do in the near future. So the Clash of the Titans in the gaming world this year may be between the Xbox Series X and the PS5, but there is another contender in the ring. Enter the Series S. So this cute little thing is Xbox's smallest Xbox ever. Well, let's take a look at this thing using the five Ps. P1, price. At £250, it's £200 cheaper than the Series X. And for that price, you get the console and a controller. It doesn't come with any games, but this console is backwards compatible, which means you will be able to play a lot of your old Xbox games on it, as long as they're digital downloads. This console doesn't have a disk drive. And that's one of the big differences between the X and the S. It also has less storage. You can add more, but it isn't cheap. P2 Power. Although the Series S is cheaper than the Series X, it's still a next-gen console, has a lot of the same technology inside it, which means it's still a powerful machine, just less powerful. The main difference is in the resolution, which is how clear things look. Graphics might not look as crisp on the Series S, and some details might not shine through quite as well, but it still looks pretty amazing. And if you haven't got a 4K TV, then you might not be able to notice the difference anyway. P3 Performance, ta-da! After a few days of playing on this console, the main thing I've noticed is how fast it is. Load times are just so much quicker, with some games only taking about 10 seconds to start up. My favourite feature is its quick resume, which lets you flip between many games without having to save and close and wait for the next one to load, and you can carry on right where you left off. Both consoles support up to 120 frames per second, which is basically all about smoothness. And in some games, you can even choose whether you'd rather focus on better images or smoother gameplay. P4 Play. 
One thing the S doesn't have is a lot of new next-gen games. It's the same for the Series X, there just aren't many out yet. So it's hard to really get a feel for what this console can do. Instead, Microsoft has been pushing their Game Pass, a subscription service where you pay monthly to get access to around 100 games. Lots of older games have been given a refresh, so they will look better and load faster. P5 Appearance! Appearance? Get it? There's a P in there somewhere. Now it has been compared to a washing machine and a speaker. But I do like the look of this console. It's more likely to fit in your TV stand than the X. And personally, I think it looks better on its side. After hours of playing on these consoles, the main difference I noticed from the Xbox One and the PS4 is the faster loading times. That quick resume feature is really cool. But as for graphics and everything else, it kind of depends on your TV and internet speeds as to whether or not you can really make the most of next-gen consoles right now.